Hi, this is Aliyah, and today we have a very special guest, Paula Walford. Paula is the expert of Moroccan cuisine, and her last book is amazing, The Food of Morocco. It's a must in every kitchen, and it just won the James Beard Award. Congratulations, Paula. Thank you. We're Thank you. so proud of you. Well, I'm very proud of you. Thank you for being out. <laughs> yeah, it's, I love it. And, and actually, 500 pages. 500 pages. It has a lot of stories. That's something that I really like about it. It's the stories. Well, I mean, you, you, I'm trying to bring Moroccan food to the American audience. They have to know what the dish means to people. Mm -hmm. You just can't throw a recipe out there and expect people to understand. I mean, you know, you have to have a story, you have the people, you have the taste, you have to describe all that. Then it works, to me. For me, it does. Yes, yes. Anyway, this is my second book on Moroccan cooking. Yes. In 1973, I published a book called Couscous and Other Good Food from Morocco. I know. It's little still little. in print. I can't believe it. <laughs> but there's a few things that are in the same book. Mm -hmm. Why? Preserved lemons. You can't write a book without putting preserved lemons in. But... Apropos of today, mm -hmm. in the old book, I show how to make warka, which we're going to make today. Yes. And in making warka, you have to understand that for centuries, the women made warka and sold women in the street or women, specialists, specialists, that's right, specialists, would do it for weddings. Mm -hmm. And people didn't know how to make it. Why? Because it's very difficult and very long time of work. They take the dough, they would work it to such elasticity that they could go like this yes. and have a pan like a like a yo-yo. Uh -huh. It had so much elasticity and it didn't stick, but it stuck just enough. Mm -hmm. Not stick, stick. Well you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. It just stayed for a second and then when they got pop, 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 yeah. pop, 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 they had a see-through um, sheet Orca, of barca. Yeah. Cooked on only one side, the side the pan was sitting over uh, coals. All right. That's how I described it. You gave the recipe, but I also said you could use phyllo, you could use strudel. I gave all other alternatives. While I was working on this book, mm -hmm. I was floating around on a, a, a group called Yabi Ladi. You know them? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. And I, I'm, I'm a member. Oh, nice. And uh, the fact they gave me, some of the women helped me, gave me recipes. But I noticed some of the people were talking about a new way to make warka uh -huh. with a paintbrush. Yeah, I saw this. This is a paintbrush you're right. using. That's right. It's actually it a real paint for painting yes, but the house. It's a bristle brush. It must be a bristle brush. A bristle brush. brush. It's only three dollars. It's nothing. So but bristle, you, like how do you know it's a bristle? Because it's like oh it says. Hundred percent pure bristle. bristle. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, if you believe what So it has to say okay. bristle brush. Okay. Now you can get it more narrow and you can do other things. Like but this one. is what I it depends yeah. on it depends on the size. It's a four of inch one. Yeah. To go. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I use a four inch one, but it can be other size. Yeah. It can be smaller. Okay. If you have one at home that's two inches, go for it. Mm -hmm. Don't go running all over the place. Okay. I saw this woman, I believe it was in Arabic, but maybe it was in French. I don't remember. It was so long ago. But it was a YouTube. Just yeah. like you. <laughs> and she was making it of uh, making warka. Um Online, uh -huh. you know, in the machine, on the uh, television, uh -huh. uh, excuse me, on YouTube, um, with a paintbrush, and then I discovered that it went, um, it went all over. Lots of people were talking about it, so I tried her recipe. Mm -hmm. It didn't work for me because I didn't understand some of her language, mm -hmm. and I had to make my own recipe that worked for me. And it took a while. It took me a long time. Um, I finally discovered that using a very strong flour, mm -hmm. um, like red flour, but if you can get it a little bit stronger than that, fine. Is the difference? Well, that the energy, because remember, they are doing all this. Yeah, pop, pop, pop. yeah. You're not going to have to do that. Um, You're not going to have to work it the same way. Of course, we have food processors today. Yeah. But anyway, and we'll use it. So the strong flour, like how, like if I go to the supermarket here in the U.S., what is the strong flour? A bread flour, bread flour. B bread flour. Yes. Okay, bread flour. Yes. And then, if you were going to make brewa, uh, if you were going to make um, brewats, or you're going to make pastilla, you might want to use a little bit of semolina in there. Okay. I use a little bit of all-purpose flour all to purpose. bring down all that energy of the strong, strong flour. flour. Good okay. strong flour, little weak flour. And we, we you'll give the recipe. Yeah, um, yeah we'll right. give you the recipe okay. of this wonderful right. warka. So you, what what I discovered, mm -hmm. and. Um, it wasn't all at once that I discovered these things, but I discovered that you could that the dough, the batter is made a day in advance, it's 
better, it's stronger. Uh -huh. So you make the dough, you let it sit in the fridge for 24 hours, and then you make the wok pie right. with the or brush. Or you keep for three days, actually. Three days? Yes. Okay. Um, then you can make your wok uh -huh. and then you can freeze it. You can keep it in the refrigerator, as we show, we'll show uh, in the class. And um, you can even freeze it. Okay. And I have lots of recipes in my book. You can do the pastilla, you can do the dessert pastilla, you can do... Um, all kinds of yeah. gray wops. I mean, the wop is, is one of the most important ingredients in Moroccan cooking. Yes, and the trouble with using phyllo or using the others is they never get that crunch. Yes, the crunch. That crunch that you remember. Yes. How did that woman do it? They did it because they went pop, 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 pop. So now the food processors will do it for you. Yes. Well, so that's one thing that was very uh, interesting to me is I read the, the recipe of the wok in this book and I never thought we could do it at home. Because growing up, I've never seen my grandmother or any other friends of mine making it at home. We actually go to the souk and buy it from the experts. Well, I lived in Morocco for seven years. I mean, I should give myself a little bona fide <laughs> that I was actually there for a long time. And my housekeeper, who was from the Rift, uh -huh. she didn't know how to make it. And one time we wanted to have a big party. Uh -huh. So she brought, she, she found a woman who was a specialist. And the woman came to the house because I really wanted to see it done. But then I found out that when I went into town with her one day, she showed me where you can actually buy it straight from the women making it, and it's much cheaper than having it come to your house. Oh, yes. And there was a whole room, and they were sitting there on boxes with a, 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 a little furnace up, uh, at their legs with a big tin pot. It was actually copper on the outside, I think, and tin inside, uh -huh. and you could hear it pow, 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 pow. They lift it up, put it on the side. Wow. And it was unbelievable. And then there was somebody who was selling them by the weight. So you bought a half yeah, a yeah, kilo, exactly. etc. And you exactly. brought it home. So nobody needed to make it. Yeah. But here in the States or wherever you are, if you don't have access, correct. It's easy to make it is so much easier to make and I have lots of people test it. I had somebody test it in Australia, I had somebody test it in New York, I had somebody test it in London. Yeah. And it worked. Yeah. But it's really going to work because they're gonna see it done. Yes, and now that you're going to have the visual of how to make it, I'm sure it's going to be an easy task. Ramadan is coming up. I know. And in, in Morocco, the warka is super important. We make a lot of briwat, pastilla, and what's the, why we do it is because it's convenient. Yes. You can actually make it and freeze it, the briwat right. and all that stuff. And you can freeze, yeah. you can freeze the warka. Uh, do you want me to go and get it and I'll come right back? Yes! Okay, because I made some for you. Oh, nice! Now you got to remember that it, I'm not going to be able, I'm not going to be able to unravel this now because it's all frozen, but all you have to do is between paper towels or between the, here it is. Well, let's put it this way so they can It's see. very hard to see. Ooh, see, this is frozen warka and there is paper towel it, in between each and, warka. And a parchment or room. Um, organic wax paper and then just the ends are a little bit you know get yeah. it, but it's really awesome warm. and that way you have it now i know this looks very primitive but that's because i didn't have a good sheet i didn't have a good plastic to put it in and <laughs> i love it it tastes good oh well it tastes it's exactly the same marker that yeah. i mean that we use today the same dough all right i'll just put it away okay